Hello friends, transporting millions of sheep and cows is a big problem for farmers in many countries in terms of means and transportation costs. Farmers have raised millions of sheep using the simplest and most profitable method. So how cost effective is it for farmers to transport millions of cows and sheep by large ships? Here is the video. But before we begin, make sure you subscribe to our channel to support us along this journey. Every morning, after being nourished with concentrate, the sheep are taken out to the pasture, where they can eat fresh grass and rest under the shade of trees throughout the day. They will be able to run and search for food on their own in large fields. These fields are always inspected and ensured that the fences are sturdy, that there are no wild animals, and that sheep are not stolen or stray. A field of grass can provide enough food for hundreds of sheep. The amount of grass consumed each day depends on many factors, such as sheep breed, weather, and grass quality. A typical adult sheep eats two to three pounds of grass per day. Compared to raising sheep on farms, grazing sheep outdoors offers many advantages. Sheep eat fresh, nutritious grass, which helps improving meat quality. Exercising a lot also helps sheep develop muscles and increase resistance. Furthermore, livestock costs are reduced because there is no need to build barns and use a lot of concentrate. According to research by the University of Melbourne, outdoor sheep grazing can reduce costs by 20% to 30% compared to raising sheep on farms. Specifically, the cost of building a barn usually ranges from $500 to $1,000 per sheep. Concentrate costs accounts for about 50% of the total cost of sheep farming and labor costs are also significantly reduced when grazing sheep outdoors. About every six months, the farm will check the weight and name tags on the sheep's ears, performing weight checks and reading information from sheep ear tags also helps farmers detect sheep health problems early. If there are signs of illness, the farm owner can promptly take the sheep for treatment, preventing the infection from spreading to other sheep. In Australia, sheep farms have a particularly important job, harvesting wool. This is a produce that is performed twice per year spring and fall. At these times, the fleece is at its peak, long and healthy. Let's look at how people do this. First, the sheep are brought to the harvested place. Then harvesters use special tools to carefully cut the sheep's wool. Each sheep provides a different amount of wool, depending on the type of sheep and the time of harvest. The sheep's wool is cut to still look beautiful, not damaged or dirty. Australian fleas costs between $1.50 and $3 per pound, depending on quality. Sheep's wool is a valuable raw material used to make wool, fabric, and many other products. As for sheep, this process helps them feel cooler in the summer and also helps them grow healthily. After shearing, the sheep are taken to a bath and treated with disinfectant using a mixture called vetrazin diluted with water. This bathing process takes place at a rate of 1,500 animals per hour.
Finally, to make sure the sheep are clean and healthy, they are treated with green medicine. The time for harvesting wool from a flock is from two to three days, depending on the number of sheep. And these jobs not only bring income, but also create good living conditions for the sheep and the people who care for them. Transporting sheep around the world is a complex process and has important features that helps ensuring sheep safety and meat quality. Sheep are most often transported in the spring and fall, when the weather is warm or cool, facilitating movement. The transportation process begins with preparing the sheep. Before leaving, sheep are inspected to ensure their health and that of consumers. The sheep are then brought onto the ship by truck or tractors, and housed in special ship holes designed to protect them. The departure time is usually in the evening to take advantage of the cold temperatures and reduce stress for the sheep. Shipping time depends on distance, ranging from 10 to 20 days from Australia to other countries around the world. On board, the sheep are fully cared for with green food, concentrates, and clean drinking water. Their health is monitored daily to detect any problems or Most importantly, these sheep must be registered and quarantined according to each country's regulations to ensure the safety of their health and that of consumers. This also brings economic benefits to Australia, which each year exporting about 5.5 million sheep, contributing to about $2 billion in revenue. Similar to sheep, cows are also one of the livestock species transported around the world. Cows are transported onto ships by trucks, then placed in special ship holds to ensure safety during the journey. Frequently, container ships or refrigerated cargo ships are used to transport cows, with frequent departures in the evening when outdoor temperatures are coolest. Shipping time depends on distance from 10 to 20 days for journeys from Australia to countries around the world. During the trip, cows are fully cared for with green food, concentrates, and clean drinking water. Cow health is checked daily to detect any problems early. Estimates shows that Australia exports about 1.5 million cows each year, contributing significantly to revenue of about $1 billion. Transporting cows and sheep around the world not only ensures safety but also contributes to international economic development and provides important food sources around the world. So how are giant cows are raised and transported around the world? Let's continue watching the rest of the video to know exactly how. Russian farmers used plastic boxes to raise cows outdoor. With the main ingredient from high-density polyethylene plastic, it is not only a smart choice, but also an effective solution to protect cows from the effects of harsh weather. The outer layer of the box, made from virgin HDPE plastic, with a thickness ranging from 0.118 to 0.197 inches. Not only does this provide high durability, but also protects the box from 
the effects of weather, especially the rain, sun, and the wind. The inner layer, manufactured from recycled HDPE, ranges in thickness from 0.079 to 0.118 inch. Not only does it increase the insulation of the box, but it also plays an important role in keeping the cows warm in the winter and creating a cool environment in the The combination of virgin and recycled materials not only helps protecting the environment, but also improves the box's performance. The price of an outdoor plastic cow box ranges from $50 to $100. The price is considered reasonable compared to the benefits it brings. After giving birth, cows will be placed in empty boxes by Russian farmers. These boxes were lined with straw before the calves were put in to keep them. There are actually female dairy calves being raised to become the next generation of dairy calves on the farm. The reason calves are kept in these separate pens is to keep them safe and healthy. When a calf is born, it does not have a developed immune system. So if they're housed together in a group, the calves are more likely to get sick. The calves are only raised in these pens for about six to eight weeks. When they're old enough, they're moved into a small group of other calves of the same age. From there, the calves will stay together and every few months will be transferred to a larger herd of calves of the same age until they're introduced into the milking herd. Another thing to know about calf barns is that they provide a safe dry place for calves to rest and sleep, and they provide protection from rain, sun, and water. Each barn has an outdoor area so calves can be outside when they want. There is also a place in the barn for calves to have access to clean, fresh water and grain several times a day. Farmers feed each calf milk to complete their diet. The lowest outdoor temperature in Russia is about minus 50 degrees. The highest is about 10 degrees. When snow covers all farms, this is also the time when young cows are brought to the farm. After a period of six to eight months, when the calves have enough resistance and can function normally, they will be brought down to live with cows of the same age. When the calf is moved into the breeding area, the ear tagging process for identification is carried out. Ear tags, usually made from metal or plastic, carry important information such as the owner, breed of cow, and the date of birth. Calves here will be provided with a variety of dry food for supplementary food. Silage is their main food source ensuring the supply of fiber and energy. The breeding area is designed to be large, with a good ventilation system to ensure that the cows have enough space to move and rest comfortably. To optimize the feeding process, food for cows is provided through a mechanical system The computer will automatically calculate the amount of feed needed for each cow and provide feed according to a prison schedule. Another important component is the farm wash water system, which helps maintain hygiene and prevent the spread of diseases. The system usually uses hot water, 
controlled by a computer to ensure effective dirt washing performance. Most cattle in Russia are raised for milk, according to the Russian Ministry of Agriculture. Animal milk consumption in Russia is about 25 million tons. Fresh milk accounts for about 60%. Pasteurized milk accounts for about 30%. And pasteurized milk accounts for about 10%. Dairy cows in Russia can maintain milk from about 300 to 500 days. The milk quality of outdoor dairy cows in Russia is rated higher than other farming months. Milk from dairy cows raised outdoors often has higher levels of fat, protein, and nutrients as well. Their delicious taste makes these types of cow's milk top the market. So are there any larger outdoor cow farming markets? Please comment below to let us know right now in the comments section. In today's world, the closed goat farming industry is becoming an important part of the stable supply of goat milk and goat products. According to statistics from the Food and Agriculture Organization, of the United States. About 20% of goat farms in the world currently apply closed methods, and this number tends to increase due to consumer demand. Consumption is increasingly high. To maintain a healthy goat raising environment, farmers need to pay attention to factors such as temperature, humidity, light, Wind and bedding. The ideal temperature for raising goats is between 15 to 25 degrees Celsius, and humidity is between 50 to 70 percent. In high temperature areas, providing drinking water is important to avoid head strokes, while in lower temperature areas, careful covering is important to avoid frostbite. For nutrition, goats need to be provided with adequate food such as hay, cereals, and nutritious seeds. Hay should be provided at least twice a day, while nutritious grains such as seeds should be included in the diet once a day in the morning. The average adult goat consumes about 2 to 3 pounds of feed every day. However, this amount can fluctuate depending on the breed of goat, stage of growth, and other factors. Baby goats will be fed formula after breastfeeding for about 6 to 8 weeks. The time it takes a goat to mature depends on the breed. But usually, dairy goats will mature after about 18 months. To ensure the best health and development for goats, they need to be outdoors for at least 2 hours a day. The best time is early morning or late afternoon, allowing them to enjoy the sunlight and exercise.
outdoor cereals should be provided in high places, depending on the goat breed, climate conditions, and specific production needs. Farmers need to adjust care measures to ensure goats grow healthily. Goats begin to produce milk when they are six months old and continue to produce milk until their estrus cycle ends, usually about 21 days. During this time, the goat's milk production reaches its peak, increasing harvest efficiency. Normally, the milk harvesting process is done twice a day, in the morning and afternoon. At each milking, a goat can provide three to five liters of milk. Currently, the world's most modern goat milking lines are operating mainly in advanced countries, such as the US, the Netherlands, Germany, etc. These systems are designed with many outstanding advantages to increase productivity. Increase milking productivity, reduce production costs, and ensures goat milk quality. In particular, the rotating line is capable of milking up to 50 goats at the same time, optimizing production efficiency. The amount of milk harvested from each goat depends on many factors such as goat breed, care, and nutrition. On average, each adult goat can provide about 250 to 300 liters of milk a year. On small farms, milking systems are often designed with manual or semi-automatic milking machines, capable of milking 20 goats at the same time. The milking process involves bringing the goat into the milking barn, cleaning the udders, and then the milking machine automatically performs the milking process. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, total world milk production in 2022 will reach about 900 million tons, of which cow milk accounts for 80% while goat milk accounts for 10% and sheep milk accounts for 10%. The price range from one and a half to two dollars per liter. The process of producing cheese from goat milk is a complex and sophisticated process requiring careful care from milk hygiene to the cheese aging process. Goat cheese, with its higher fat content than cow's milk cheese, creates a distinctive, rich flavor. Below are details about the production process and some interesting facts surrounding the goat cheese industry. Filtering milk through a clother milk filter helps ensure cleanliness and safety for consumers' health. The goat milk is then heated and the enzyme rennet is added to coagulate the milk. This process creates a coagulant and whey milky water, where the whey will be separated from the coagulant. The coagulated portion is cut into small pieces to facilitate the release of the whey more easily. The cheese is then stewed 
for about 30 minutes to one hour so that all the whey can escape, making the cheese thicker and more delicious. Then the whey is removed from the cheese through a skimming or filtering process. After it's poured into molds to shape the product, the cheese is then salted to add flavor and preserve it. The cheese is then aged for about two to six weeks to develop its characteristic flavor. Finally, it'll be cut into small pieces for packaging and sale. The price of goat cheese depends on many factors, such as goat breed, production method, fat content, and flavor. On average, the cheese of the goat is much more expensive than the cow cheese. The Italian Pecorino Romano cheese is known as the most expensive goat cheese in the world. It is produced from goat milk that grazes the mountains of Italy giving it a rich, delicious flavor and high-fat content. Its price ranges from $200 to $300 per kilogram. According to the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, the annual world consumption of goat cheese is about 2 million tons. The countries consuming the most includes Italy, France, Spain, the United States, and Greece. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. So since we don't really have any clue of what kind of difficulties that you could be facing in your farms, Please don't forget to share all the problems you're facing and the obstacles you're going through as this will tremendously help us with our upcoming videos.